Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and songs are getting too short. Let's talk about it. First off, this video is going to be a bit of a two-fold video. We are first going to talk about song length and a little bit of history and what I think the pros and cons are of these songs getting a lot shorter in all genres of music, as well as listening to and reacting to the brand new Thirst and Chill track that just came out today on Monster Cat. So uh, this video will be two-fold. First off, it is no surprise that songs are getting shorter. It has been a hot topic of the community as of late. I've done some hot takes videos on it. Everyone's sort of talking about it here and there. And uh, I think a lot of this culminated specifically in the Monster Cat community, more and more and more conversation because a bad computer track just came out this past week at two minutes and nine seconds. And then this new Thirst and Chill track came out at 99 seconds, a minute 39, which is a very, very short, especially compared to some 10 minute infected mushroom tracks, but that's um, a totally different can of worms, I should say. But yeah, I kind of wanted to make a video to just sort of give my full, honest opinions and thoughts on shorter songs and uh, where the music industry trend is going, whether I like it or not, or kind of understand why it's going that way. So first off, um, I, yeah, I don't really like shorter songs. Uh, I've said this a lot vocally throughout my channel, and I think there's many reasons to that, but I want to get into that in a second. I want to give some kind of facts first about where uh, stuff is going, and are we really, are songs really getting shorter compared to history? So first off, I want to show this graph from Statistica, which is a very popular and well-renowned kind of uh, statistical company of sorts. Uh, they do a lot of peer-reviewed journals and things. And so, uh, yeah, they say here that, uh, yeah, songs are getting shorter by far when they kind of looked at Spotify data, at least I think it was, what, 160,000 samples from a bunch of different years. But um, interesting to note, though, is uh, song length actually peaked in the 1990s at 259 seconds, and we are now down to about 197 on average for, I believe, uh, charting tracks is what this uh, one is. But um, yeah, that's interesting also because if you look back at the 1930s songs were also a lot shorter um they were actually shorter than they are technically in the 2020s when this data was taken by two seconds um and that is for a lot of reasons i think one is actually just um capacity and the way that we were transferring and um, distributing music back then because we didn't have this infinite data of the internet and online we didn't have so much space on sd cards and thumb drives and stuff like that and discs it was all just uh, it, it was all very, very early days of stuff, um, and so it was harder to transfer lots and lots of music, and so songs uh, were shorter due to sort of the limitations of technology at the time. And that's why I think we see a lot of increase in that time length going into the 1990s, specifically because, yeah, we have more means to get more music to more people in more ways uh, than ever before, and uh, we have now hit a point, though, we hit an apex there in the 1990s, we're coming down now because of... Um, yeah, just, uh, I mean, technology and uh, just our, our attention spans and people have talked about it for so long now. Just in, uh, We are so fast and fast and fast and fast and trying to get more information and be on our screens 24-7 and we just have the, hit, the dopamine hit right away. And so that's definitely a big reason to why uh, song length has shortened. Uh, but I want to give a quick uh, little pro-con list on what I think really are uh, the, the biggest pros and cons are why songs would be getting shorter nowadays. So my three pros, I think, are that, one, you can actually listen to more music if the songs are shorter. Like, if, let's say, there's a 10-minute Infected Mushroom track, I can listen to one inf Infected Mushroom song, or I can listen to five bad computer songs. And so there's just more music to go around if, uh, <laughs> if their songs are shorter. Second is it's a lot easier to get streams. It's a lot easier for artists to get paid and to <laughs> actually make a career out of music because more people are just going to quickly come and listen to that stuff and move on to something else right away and they're not staying for these 10 minute long tracks they're just in and they're out and with the streaming services and and how everything is very playlist based right now uh you just need a quick 30 seconds uh, and Spotify counts it as a full play. And so you don't need all that length. And so to make a career out of stuff, you just need to make, in theory, 30 seconds of a good song and just hit it big with that. But when it comes to cons, I think the biggest one for sure is that you are really limiting what you can do. You've put a intentional limit, a ceiling on what you can do musically, sonically, stylistically, structurally with a 
with a track, with a song. You are intentionally putting barriers on yourself to what you can accomplish with music by making it so short. And yes, I know obviously there's a ton of crazy stuff that can happen in those, let's say, two minutes, two and a half minutes, 90 seconds, and there can be a lot of really cool stuff in there and sounds and instrumentation, but you are limiting yourself. Think of it as like an art canvas. If you've got a small little piece of canvas, uh, you can only do so much with it, but then when you go to like the size of like, let's say a wall, you can do so much more. Your your options are just so much more or are widened. So obviously I'm not an artist myself, but if I'm trying to think of the perspective of an artist, I'm trying to imagine that I don't think they really are wanting to do a ton of really short songs. I think they're just seeing them work. I think they're seeing that they're putting in X amount of work into a track and then seeing that succeed more than them putting like X more hours into the same track to get less results. Like, I hope that makes sense. So I like to think of it, I've got a, a marketing business degree, but with a supply demand kind of graph where the supply is essentially your time uh, of the song and your demand is how much people are listening to that song, where if people are only gonna listen to like 30 seconds or a minute of the song, and you're gonna get paid for that 30 second barrier, then why even make the song that's so much longer and put so much more time and effort into it when you can accomplish the exact same thing in much shorter amount of time? And so I really don't think it's artists trying to exploit this kind of thought and idea and this attention span of the specifically younger generations, but I think it's just almost a necessity to survive nowadays. I think in a similar way, you could also kind of graph the thought of doing it for the love of music versus doing it for a career. And there's a point where that intersects, where you don't have to put in more effort. You don't have to go above where this is a career for you and where you can make money to survive. You don't have to go above that point and that's just all waste at that point. It's all just wasted song. It's wasted potential, quote unquote. Um, but yeah, so it's just such a fine line of balancing between, and, I, and I'd, like, I'd really like to know from artists, uh, if you are an artist particularly watching this video, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these, uh, like on this idea of shorter songs, because obviously I am not an artist myself. I just provide commentary here and there, and I listen to a ton of music. But uh, how do you feel this the musical landscape is with songs being so short? And have you also kind of gotten into making shorter songs because you felt like you need to or because that's just what either management has told you or that's what you found has worked? So I'd love to hear from you. So all that is to say that, uh, yes, I don't love shorter songs. I think songs should be a lot longer because I want to hear a more fleshed out, expansive, multi-movement track. And I want to hear more of it. I want to go on a musical journey. I don't just want the quick dopamine hit. But I know I'm a very small percentage of the population in that sense, and I know I'm a very, very small percentage, and I get that. And so I, I like to think I, I'm not too harsh on songs for their song length, but it's more of just at the end, I'm like, a, ah, I wish there was a third something. I wish there was, it went a little bit longer. I wish there was a third act, a third movement, another pre-chorus, just another something to, to keep me more engaged with a track. So um, yeah, uh, which, <laughs> which does lead us into the second part of the video, which is listening to the new Thirst and Chill track. Drifter has just come out now on Monster Cat, and uh, I'm intrigued to hear what this is going to be like. Um, so yeah, Thirst and Chill. Thirst is also the uh, combined aliases of Bad Computer, Roy Knox, and uh, Have. And so there's, uh, in theory, because Have is two people, this is a, a five-person produced track at 99 seconds long, um, in theory. So, uh, which, uh, yeah, it actually isn't in theory. It is, it took... Not took, but there's, yeah, five people that put together uh, this 99 second track, which I'm not trying to diss. I also know a lot of this is just for fun. And uh, this is a, a fun new wave of music with Drift Funk or just funk in general. And so uh, I know this is more of a passion project, I think, more than anything. But um, let's listen to it. Let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> figure out what we think of Drifter. Let's do it. First movement already done and we're 40 seconds into a track.
Okay, that was uh, that was Drifter. Uh, <laughs> Ninety nine seconds of Drifter, um, and uh, you know, I, <laughs> I I I felt what I expected to feel with that. Um, I just uh, <laughs> it's not so much for me. I also am not a huge funk fan, and uh, this just felt like it was. I, I didn't really feel anything from this track. Not that you need to feel something from every single track. I'm not expecting everything to be this emotional masterpiece. Um, but, uh, I just like, I don't know. I just <laughs> I felt so little, uh, but like, this would be really fun to put in DJ mixes and stuff and to, uh, to, to add into just quick hits of mixes and here and there, if I heard this playing out somewhere, I would jam to it. And, um, yeah, I, I just don't think it's a, like, I don't think it's a bad song. I just think there's just, it's just so, I don't know. There's so little to it, uh, to some extent. And that's just not my preferred listening habits, my preferred listening style. And I get that, but, uh, I will be fascinated to see if this, uh, goes further in its streaming, uh, how well this will do streaming wise and, um, see if I'm going to eat my own words, I guess. I guess, well, yeah, not quite, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I just feel like it's, it just came and went so quickly. Uh, there was just, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just, not a huge fan of, of quick songs, not a, I'm not a huge fan of funk, so we'll just kind of leave it at that. I don't want to get too harsh or anything on this, but um, not a bad track, not my style, but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of any and all of this conversation around short songs, around this track, in particular Drifter. I'd love to hear it and keep the conversation going, but other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.